You know, I want to talk about the experiment of negative interest rates. You are truly expert on this and the effect on commercial banks. We're duration out 2019, 2020, and all of a sudden another year beckons, granted within, a, you know, within this horrific pandemic as well. Is 2021 a tip point for commercial banking where they just say we can't do it in a negative rate environment? Uh, well, thanks for having me on, Tom. Look, I, my view is that the longer we have negative rates, the more the side effects. And there was a great study by the San Francisco Fed who really showed five years out how damaging this is. If you look at the latest ECB statistics, they're forecasting that Eurozone banks will make just 2% for the next three years. Um, and I think that's why, in some ways, what the ECB did last week in extending the special funding for lending program was so important. Um, one of my concerns, and certainly think the concerns of many policymakers, is will the banks be strong enough to lend to small businesses to, you know, to fuel the recovery um, when uh, it's been such a, a tough environment? And I, I think the, I can think these funding for lending schemes continue to be extended uh, because of the side effects of negative rates are getting more corrosive by the day. What is keeping the United Kingdom? For that matter, what is keeping the United States from joining the negative rate experiment? It's a great question. I mean, I think some of this is a matter of belief and some of it is a matter of fact. I mean, like, like we all know, in economics, there's never a good experiment. Uh, but what we do know is that in Japan, who's had low and negative rates for the longest, the Japanese regional banks are the most unprofitable banks on the planet. And that's why the Japanese actually recently offered a special bonus rate to pay the banks to restructure. As you think about the Anglo-Saxon world, New Zealand, Australia, UK, America have all contemplated negative rates, but so far just said this isn't something they want to get out of the toolbox for fear that once you're there, there's no reversing. And I think I agree with Mohammed al -Aryan. It, there is There is no obvious retreat once you've gone negative. So why, why be tempted by this Alice in Wonderland world that none of us really want to get into, even though it's getting to Christmas? Um, Hugh, are banks are strong enough to actually fund the recovery? Uh, well, first, happy birthday, Francine. I mean, I think that uh, they uh, are. I mean, for me, the banks are the dogs that dig didn't bark this crisis. Uh, they've been resilient. Uh, they've been able to uh, lend. I mean, one concern, though, for us all is um, uh, almost all lending this year to businesses on balance sheets has come from guaranteed lending. Take the UK. 42 out of 44 billion of loans this year were guaranteed. And so understandably, none of us quite know if they're strong enough. But I, my, my view is that in the main, the larger banks are strong enough to lend. And it's much more a lack of demand from small businesses who've been very cautious. But inevitably, they're going to be weak and strong. And one of the things that you know we've discussed before, but I'm really intrigued by at the moment, is whether the pandemic not only has accelerated the whole digital agenda, but it's also accelerated a winner-takes-most characteristic. And I think that's something that the stronger banks just get stronger and stronger, and I think the weaker and small banks are going to find this a really tough wicket. But, Hugh, what happens when government guarantee loans actually expire? So does it mean that small and medium-sized enterprises just won't have access to the, the funding that they need, or it, does it become dangerous for the banks because they'll keep on lending? Look, it's a, it's a great question. I think, like most things in life, the devil's in the detail. In the States, some of the PPP bro, uh, program was actually written off as grants. Um, that's not been the case in Europe so far. And I think one of the real concerns, whether it's UK, Germany, France, Spain, Switzerland, is are these loans, are these contingent, which will come back, which the firms have to repay, maybe over a slightly longer period, whether they can get be, be written off. And then number two, is the government loan or guaranteed loan senior to any new financing to fund the recovery? And I think in particular, one of the topics you've debated a lot is, as the economy recycles, some parts of the hospitality industry are clearly under still stress, not, notwithstanding the rebound trade. Um, how do we fuel the new businesses? And so I think it's very important for us to make sure the pipes are clean. Um, but I do think this overhang of guaranteed lending yeah. is something which will, you know, the debt stack whether it's governments or private sector, remains something which will trouble us. Hugh, to your incredibly important piece in the FT December 3rd, folks, it's a real tour de force of, I'll get, try to get it out on Twitter today, it's a huge tour de force on where we are in our worldwide commercial banking. And I don't want to go all Sherlock Holmes on you here that the dog didn't bark, 
But the issue is we got through this year with banking solidity. We have Japan. We have Europe becoming like Japan. Do you just assume Anglo-Saxon banking becomes like Japan and that we really have to worry about the barking dog? Look, it's, it's, a, gr it's a great question, um, uh, Tom, and it's something that has been a lot of my mind. Look, so uh, I s s strongly believe uh, that the larger, stronger banks have, have got the scale to invest in technology. I mean, you know, one thing we all will be debating this year is, has, has technology accelerated us three years, five years, ten years? Let's imagine it's three to five for a bank. You've now got to invest three to five years in the next 12 months. That requires deep pockets, and the scale of the larger Anglo-Saxon banks or Swiss banks, I think, really can pay off. <clears throat> but there's a real challenge for the more mid-cap banks. And we've seen a, yeah. a flurry of deals. And there's you know, another one this week. Um, that flurry of deals is going to turn to a crescendo uh, because I think the challenge of a, that scale, a lack of scale, is really going to weigh on the banks. But, but one of the things I, I, when I did my work for um, Government Arcani was to say that a healthy system is a profitable one. And the real challenge of Japanification is the lack of profitability and therefore right. the lack of resilience. And, and that, that's my concern, but yeah. I think the Anglo-Saxons will avoid that.